You get arrested for DWI. When they search your vehicle, they find your firearm, or maybe it's on your person, either one. Uh, in that scenario, though, you're going to be charged with unlawfully carrying a weapon because it's a crime to carry a gun and commit another offense other than a traffic law violation at the same time. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Better Call Clay podcast. This week, we're going to be talking one of my favorite topics, guns, uh, guns and the law, especially in Texas. We're going to talk a little bit about federal law, but most uh, most of this topic is going to be uh, whether what, what, what crimes are most common um, related to guns, not just using them like in, in an aggravated robbery, but I'm talking about just the possession of guns uh, and then some places where you can get yourself in trouble if you're not careful with guns. So let's just hop right into it. Uh, first things first, uh, there are about three laws that we see most often uh, that have been broken when, when people come to see us. And it, it's not even that they were trying to break a firearm related law, it just sort of happened. Um, and, and by that, I mean, the most common is unlawfully carrying a weapon. Um, if, for instance, you own a gun or you're a license to carry holder, you know, you have a license to carry permit, you have your gun on you and you go out to a bar um, and you have say too many drinks, right? And you're driving home, you get pulled over, you get arrested for DWI. When they search your vehicle, they find your firearm or maybe it's on your person, either one. Uh, in that scenario though, you're gonna be charged with unlawfully carrying a weapon because it's a crime to carry a gun and commit another offense other than a traffic law violation at the same time. So if you're in possession of marijuana in your car and you get pulled over because your license plate light is out and the officer smells the marijuana and gets you out of the car and searches for it and finds the marijuana and finds your gun, well, now you've committed not only possession of marijuana, which is now a far less serious crime, but you've also committed the offense of unlawfully carrying a weapon. Uh, so one of the quickest ways people find themselves in trouble is through that route, either a DWI, possession of some drug, uh, something like that. Now, it's, it doesn't count as unlawfully carrying a weapon if you're just pulled over for uh, tra and given a traffic citation. So it's other than class D misdemeanor traffic offenses, okay? So, but that's, that's one of the most common ways. Uh, another way is... Uh, you know, it, it used to happen a little more often back in the day. It's not quite as often now. Uh, people, I think, are a little, a little more careful about it. Uh, but carrying that gun into some place, you're not supposed to have it. Um, the Texas law specifies, especially for license to carry permits, that there are certain places you just can't take your gun. You'll see the sign usually 30-06, 30-07. That's what it is. That's how I remember it. 30.06, um, 30.07. If a business has that posted out front, says it's trespassing to carry your gun on the premises, you can't take your gun in there. But there's some places that are automatically exempted that are kind of common sense, no brainer type situations, uh, airports, schools, um, things of that nature. And so bars, 51% uh, rule is generally what we look at. If, if the establishment derives more than 51% of their income, from the sale of alcohol, well, that's a no-go zone for a gun. So carrying a gun into that establishment, even if you are licensed to carry, is still considered criminal trespassing and you're potentially subject to prosecution. So that's another way that, while you don't mean any harm with the gun, you can find yourself in a lot of trouble pretty quickly. Uh, some of those charges actually, especially guns in school zones, um, could be a third degree felony. So you want to try to steer clear of that. The, um, the third place that we find a lot of people get into a little bit of trouble with guns and, and again, not trying to get in trouble with guns, but sort of trouble finds them, if you will, is possession of guns after you've either been charged, indicted, or even convicted of certain crimes, either a felony or a misdemeanor or family violence type crimes. Um, there are a lot of provisions in the law now that if you're charged for a crime involving uh, family violence, uh, assault, um, or certain certainly felonies, um, you, your right to own guns, even though you might not have been convicted yet, uh, can be curtailed. A lot of my clients come see me. Uh, they're hunters. They have been charged with domestic violence. Now, all of a sudden, 
They've been given a protective order, temporary restraining order that tells them basically they can't own or, or have firearms in their possession. I guess they can't tell you that you can't own them. You just can't have them in your possession. So a lot of times I have to advise my clients, hey, get the guns. You got to get the guns out of the house. You know, take them to your brother's house. Take them to your father's, you know, whoever, your mother, your sister, or somebody else, another relative, somebody you trust to, to, to hold on to your guns during the time that you're, you're charged. You want to get those out of your house because you don't want to violate that protective order. You don't want to violate your bond. Uh, you certainly don't want to have additional charges coming your way. Uh, also, too, uh, we see a lot of people not really quite understanding the rules about after you're convicted of a felony. Let's say, uh, you know, you do get convicted of a felony or a deferred adjudication, one of those, either one. Uh, when can you own a gun again as a, as a former convicted felon or somebody who's been on deferred adjudication probation for a felony? Uh, well, the answer is generally five years after you're finished with your probation or finished with your term of incarceration, per Texas law, you can own a gun and have it in your house. Now, I don't know how you're going to buy it because you're prohibited from buying firearms at that point. But I guess if you had a gun that you could get from somebody else, or maybe you had it before you went to prison or went on deferred probation, uh, you could bring it back into your home. But that's just Texas law. Uh, federal law says that if you're a convicted felon or you've, you've been on that deferred adjudication, generally speaking, you're prohibited for the rest of your life from owning a gun under federal law. So you have to be real careful there. Uh, but in Texas, at least, it's five years after you get out of prison or five years after you get off of probation, uh, whether it's regular probation or deferred probation. And then you're green-lighted to have a gun only in your home for protection. You can't go, you're not hunting. You can't carry it in your car. Uh, you don't get to wear it around in public. Uh, it's only basically for in your home use. Uh, now that's, that's a little less common. We don't see that quite as often. Um, but those are generally the three ways you can get in a lot of trouble in a real hurry just by virtue of possessing a firearm. Um, we could spend uh, quite a significant amount of time talking about all the different firearms laws, uh, particularly the Castle Doctrine, um, when you can use deadly force and things of that nature. But we just wanted to give you a brief overview today of sort of those, uh, what I call kind of status crimes, just simply the status of having a firearm in your possession could get you in trouble in circumstances you might not even realize or weren't anticipating earlier in the evening. Uh, if you do find yourself in one of those thoughts and you feel like, uh, well, you're going to need legal representation, but uh, don't want to have your firearms rights impacted, come to us at the law office of John T. Caldwell. We'll try to our best to, to help you out of that situation. Uh, of course, we don't ever guarantee any results, but we, uh, we do the best we can with what we have to work with. Um, so once again, if you find yourself in a bad spot, like we always say on the podcast, you better call Clay.